Seven years ago, we saw the return of Star Wars. The Force Awakens released, and the entire world was booming. It was once again the top franchise in the world. Looking back, we have now seen that we've gone through our various ups and downs over the course of the years, and the release of the movies, some being praised, others being notoriously hated, and others just being split 50-50 between the community. We saw chaos within the community, people bashing each other online, and it wasn't until the return of the Mandalorian that we saw stabilization, and everyone was kind of saying that, hey, this was good. And we felt that Star Wars was moving in the correct pace. We had the release of Clone Wars after that, and everything was shaping up for it to come back in like a Marvel-esque way and be great, like the one, phase one through three. Unfortunately, it did not go as planned. Most of the promised content came out and was bland and unfinished, featuring returning heroes and familiar faces, but the stories sometimes didn't even feature the heroes covered in the story, or they downright just ended up being about someone else entirely. That said, what we got was alright and was watchable, but enjoyable was meh. It was mid. However, with the release of Andor, the community started to come back. Personally, myself, I was on the last straw and started to die out. And especially the way Andor started didn't seem like it was going to be the way it is now. We're recording this as it's coming out. I believe it's wrapping up right now. I'm still in the early episodes as I just restarted. But what really re-sparked my want to watch Star Wars again was Tales of the Jedi. This six-part little miniseries animated and directed by Dave Filoni was amazing. Top-notch Star Wars. It told two arcs, three episodes about Ahsoka and three about Dooku. And the way that it was split up was very creative. The first episode, quite slow. It's Ahsoka and her mother and they're on a hunt. And this is where you learn that she's a Jedi for the very first time. But what it really does is it sets the setting. She's a young baby, probably around Phantom Menace or pre-Phantom Menace era. And now we kind of get the idea of when we were, where we are on the timeline and when we are in the universe. Then we move on to Dooku's arc and we get three episodes straight through. And it is beautiful. We see young Qui-Gon, Mace Windu, and we see the contrasts between the dogmatic Jedi that follow their ways and are straying from them, really. And we see Dooku, who's really just misunderstood. And that's something that we never really saw from his character before. Dave Filoni is really good at fleshing out characters, making them deeper, and just diving into the story and connecting the dots. And that is exactly what he's doing here. He also killed a great theory that Yaddle would have been able to save or be the mother of Grogu. And that is just something I love that Dave Filoni also does. He kills off characters in ways that it's just like, wow, uh, there's so much hype around that character and now they're literally gone. That said, we saw a lot of similarities between Dooku and Anakin, Dooku having his chance to really prove himself to Palpatine was cool. Seeing him delete the Camino file was also pretty cool, as we learn about that in Attack of the Clones. Like I said, it's really bringing everything together in a beautiful fashion. <clears throat> and the storytelling is still very simple, although the lore is rich. Moving to the last two episodes of the series, we saw Ahsoka training with Anakin and Rex, and we see her trained all the way up to that final moment of Clone Wars Season 7, where she has to use all those skills to really prove herself and survive Order 66. And the really cool thing about this episode in particular, Episode 5, is that she's put to the test not just against what's expected of her. Anakin shows his creativity as a master and his willingness to go outside the box. He doesn't just have her go up against the little droids and have her fit to compete and be able to defend herself in the world and galaxy against droids 
and just mechanical beings. He put her up to the test against clones, and she did not back down. And he had her stick in there. And he knew that she was going to be there the whole time and get through it. And she did. All the way up, all the way through the Clone Wars, and it proved to be useful to her. In that last episode, it was also really cool to see her in Padme's funeral and then disappear and end up having to take on the Inquisitor, literally striking him down within, like, two moves. It was That was very samurai-esque, and I really appreciated that. That was Akira Kurosawa-esque at its finest, and, oh, it was amazing. And just, once again, being able to see her utilize the skills and see her training get fleshed out and, you know, learn that she is in a Mary Sue. Like I said, that was part of the downs of the <clears throat> past seven years with a character like Rey, where we didn't get to see her train and, and learn where she got these powers. It's really cool to see a character learn the power and then be able to use it. Take, like, Batman, for example. Batman gets his ass handed to him every time in the start of the episode, whether it's the cartoon and it's just a 20 minute episode or it's a movie. Like the first half is always him finding out, tracking the villain, and then bang, he gets his ass kicked. Then what does he do? He trains, he builds a gadget, something. He learns an ability that he can use to defeat that villain and the whole way we see him do that. And that's what makes Batman a great series. Star Wars needs to continue making content like Tales of the Jedi moving forward. It really got me back into the series. I was on the last draw, like not even tuning into it at this point. And now I'm back. I'm watching through Andor. It's really good. As, as I said, I thought it was going to start out with Andor just looking for uh, his sister. And it was going to end up just really being about his sister. Kind of like how Kenobi was with Leia. It really didn't feel like it was about Kenobi. That's just my opinion, though. But moving forward, I'd really like to see Filoni continue to make little series like Tales of the Jedi. If he gets a season two or Tales of the Sith, it would be really cool, too. And he can just continue to connect the dots while as Favreau continues to expand New Horizons like The Mandalorian, create live-action shows. That'd be really great because now you have cartoons and live-action shows and a one-two punch there. You need one more person, though, who can kind of be a moderator to this, either making books and really fleshing out the lore and I think the perfect person for that is Timothy Zahn. He created the Thrawn character, he's beloved by most of the franchise and to be honest this man is a well astounded writer. I mean you read through any of his books as an adult and you're like oh this is a child's book and then you're ended up glued to the whole series. I think moving forward Star Wars has a great opportunity to hit the ball out of the park and really become that top franchise again.